<laughs> All right, here we go. Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari. Get the other one. Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari. Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari <coughs> Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare. <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai <laughs> Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. All glories to the sum of the devotees. All glories to the sum of the devotees. All glories to the sum of the devotees. All glories to Shiguru and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Sorry. 
On this 15th day of March, 2022, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we're in Chapter 2, Contents of the Gita Summarized, text number 54 on page 121. Arjuna Vacha, Stita Pragyasya, Kabasha, Samadhi, Samadhi. Stasya, Stasya. Keshava, Keshava. Stitadhi, Kimprabhasheta, <coughs> Kamasita, Vajetakim, Arjuna Vacha, Stitapragyasa Kabasha, Samadhi Stasya Keshava, Sita di kim prabhasheta, Kamasita vajeta kim, Arjuna vacha, Astita pragyasa kabasha, Samadhi stasya keshava, Sita di kim prabhasheta, Kamasita vajeta kim. Arjuna Vacha, Stita Pragyasa Kabasha, Samadhi Stasya Keshava, Stita Di Kim Prabhasheta, Kimasita Vajeta Kim, Arjuna Vacha, Stita Pragyasa Kabasha, Samadhi stasya keshava Chitta di kim prabhasheta Kimasita vajeta kim Arjuna vacha Chitta pragyasya kabasha Samadhi stasya keshava Chitta di kim prabhasheta Kimasita Vajeta Kim Tita Pragyasa Kabasha Samadhi Stasya Keshava Tita Di Kim Prabhacheta Kimasita Vajeta Kim Arjuna Vacha Tita Pragyasa Kabasha Samadhi stasya keshava Chita kim kim prabhasheta Kim asita vajeta kim Arjuna vacha Chita pragyasya kabasha Samadhi stasya keshava Chita di kim prabhasheta Kimasita Vajeta Kim, ladies. Arjuna Vacha. Sita Pragyasa Kabasha. Samadhi Stasya Keshava. Sita Di Kim Prabhasheta. Kimasita Vajeta Kim. Zoom land. Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha. Sita Pragyasa Kabasha. Samadhi Stasya Keshava. Sita Di Kim Prabhasheta. Kim Ashita Vajeta Kim. Kim Ashita Vajeta Kim. Arjuna Vacha, Arjun said, Sita Pragyasa of one who is situated in fixed Krishna consciousness. <coughs> Sorry. Ka, what? Basha, language. Samadhi stasya, of one situated in trance. Keshava, O Krishna. Sita dihi, one fixed in Krishna consciousness. Kim, what? Prabhasheta, speaks. Kim, how? Asita, does remain still. Vajeta, walks. Kim, how? Translation. Arjuna said, O Krishna, what are the symptoms of one whose consciousness is thus merged in transcendence? How does he speak? And what is his language? How does he sit? 
and how does he walk? Purport. As there are symptoms for each and every man in terms of his particular situation, similarly, one who is Krishna conscious has his particular nature, talking, walking, thinking, feeling, etc. As a rich man has his symptoms by which he is known as a rich man, as a diseased man has his symptoms by which he is known as diseased, or as a learned man has his symptoms, so a man in transcendental consciousness of Krishna has specific symptoms in various dealings. One can know his specific symptoms from the Bhagavad Gita. Most important is how the man in Krishna consciousness speaks. For speech is the most important quality of any man. It is said that a fool is undiscovered as long as he does not speak, and certainly a well-dressed fool cannot be identified unless he speaks. But as soon as he speaks, he reveals himself at once. The immediate symptom of a Krishna conscious man is that he speaks only of Krishna and of matters relating to him. Other symptoms then automatically follow, as stated below. Om Jnana Timarandrasya Jnanandana Shalakya Chakshu Unmilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. What is that? Oh, okay, all right. So, Arjun is asking uh, a very logical question. Krishna has been describing someone who's fixed in consciousness, who's in samadhi, and uh, he has praised that state. So, Arjun wants to know how he can recognize such a person. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, how does he sit? How does he walk? Is that so important? But uh, you'll see the interpretation of what that means. The sitting is more than just, you know, does he sit with cross legs or something? It's more than that. It's how is he situated? How is, how is he uh, situated in his consciousness? And how you can tell. But as Prabhupada explains here, the most important thing is how uh, someone uh, who is fixed in Krishna consciousness speaks. And we saw that with Srila Prabhupada, that practically he spoke. I mean, even when he was writing his books, he's dictating his books, he's writing letters, and he didn't write, he, 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 when he was alone, and not, and this, he used a typewriter, one of these ancient typewriters, typing in two fingers. And this is the way he typed out the entire first canon, you can imagine. Uh, when he was started, uh, came to America, and um, he was writing the Bhagavad Gita, two fingers, typing out. And Gargamuni, he was walking down some of the streets in the uh, Lower East Side there, and he noticed in the window a dictating machine. And he had the good intelligence to go in there and buy it, because he saw this could, this could really speed things up. And so what Prabhupada was typing, he was now speaking. And it did speed things up. The only problem was that he now int introduced uh, another layer of possible mistakes, the transcriber. The history is, that Krishna intervened so, in so many ways. I don't know if you've read the Lilamrita, but uh, those who haven't, uh, don't, this is quite a story. So, with all of these, and you know, devotees that were there, nobody really knew how to type, or more specifically, how to transcribe, because you have to hear and speak, and then you have to use your foot to stop, and then the other pedal to go back a little bit if you missed a word. I've, I've done this a little bit. So what are they going to do? They have this nice machine. And miraculously, he bought this machine, and he, and he brought it to Prabhupada, and he explained what it was and how this would greatly speed up things. And Prabhupada said, I'll bring it over here. He knew how to use it right away. Is that a miracle or not? He didn't learn that in Radhadamana Temple. <laughs> anyway, so Prabhupada, he knew how to use the dictating part, which is quite simple. Just push this button. And, you know. So uh, well, how are they going to get the, tr the tapes transcribed? In walks Neil the typist. He was <laughs> in a university, and oftentimes they have a summer project, and he, just, he asked to, have a, uh, to be able to uh, hang out with one of the new, new religions that had grown up, you know, there's all kinds of things going on, and uh, write it up at the end, you know, and that would be one of his papers or something. So he got permission to do that for credit. So he walks in the storefront. He's not Bach to Neil, because he's not one to be a devotee, he just wants to hang out. And they immediately ask, oh, do you know how to type? And he says, yes. And do you know how to transcribe? Yes, I have done it. Oh, my God. 
you know, so they put him to work. The only problem is, <laughs> Prabhupada, when you look at these purports, especially as you get into the book, uh, like uh, I, I noticed this in the, what is it, 10 8, which is the first of the four main verses of the Bhagavad Gita. It's uh, Krishna is saying, Aham Sabasya Prabhavo Mattak I am God, I am the source of everything. Those who know this worship me. And there's all kinds of, of slokas quoted in the, in the commentary to prove that, to back up, you know, to, to confirm what Krishna says, quoted from the Upanishads and all of that. Now, what is he going to do with that? I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a skilled uh, transcriber, but it's got to all be in English. Anyway, so a lot of that was missing in the, in the first uh, unabridged edition, either missing or distorted or misheard or whatever, you know. So, uh, but, the, but the point is that Prabhupada was speaking. He would speak in his lecture, of course. He would chant Hare Krishna. He would dictate his books. He would meet with various uh, significant people. There's a beautiful picture of Prabhupada with a, uh, they invited a nun to come and sit and listen to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada is speaking there and everyone's around him, you know. So the speaking is so important. And, and as, as mentioned here, the real quality is that the, uh, he speaks of, of Krishna. And even when Prabhupada would deal with current events, which he would do sometimes, he would give a Krishna conscious perspective to that. I remember working, in, I worked in Back to God in, from 75 till at least 83. I, there was a gap in there where I worked with the BI. But anyway, I, I, and one of my duties was, was uh, editing Prabhupada lecture. If you've, uh, BTG used to be central, you know, now you hardly see one. But in a, uh, there's always a Prabhupada article first, you know, one of, one of his lectures usually, uh, sometimes a conversation. And so I was um, uh, editing that. That was one of my duties in Back to God. So uh, at one point, he, uh, what, was, what, was it, what was I going to say? Now it slipped my mind. <laughs> I don't mean to get old. It'll come back to me. But the, the whole point is that uh, the, that he, he was always speaking of Krishna, giving the Krishna conscious uh, take on the current events. I, one of the things I do remember, uh, there was a series of conversations that Prabhupada had with uh, Shamasundar and Hayagriva. Anyone who knows the history, those are two very prominent uh, devotees. And it was all on philosophy, Western philosophy which Prabhupada studied in, in school, actually, because he studied at a Scottish church's college. It was English. So he wanted to uh, comment on these, these philosophers and show where they, they went off and so where they were right and like that. You know? So there's many of them. And uh, so one of the philosophers was Karl Marx, you know, and it was very much in the middle of the Cold War there in the 70s. You know? So, and Prabhupada, he had visited Moscow, <laughs> and uh, he was there for only a few days. I don't even know if he was there for a week. But, uh, and you know, he, he could see, from his seeing the long lines and the, the faces of the people that they weren't happy and this and that, you know. And Samasunda was always going out trying to get what we call boga, you know, fresh fruit and vegetables, something like that. It was very difficult to get. So he met one, so he, I, I guess he was walking around in his Dodi and Kurta. But one one uh, young man asked him who he was and so forth, struck up a conversation, he spoke English. And so he invited him back to meet Prabhupada in the hotel where he was staying. And uh, he came up, and in like two days, I think it was over two days or so, the Prabhupada gave him the whole essence of Krishna consciousness, initiated him, and he was... He was uh, Russia, Russia is gone at that point, you know. So he went out and started preaching and, and uh, distributing books eventually when they were smuggled in. And, and he was the pioneer and he made devotees and that was, you know, Prabhupada planted the seed just by speaking, you know. <laughs> so now his, his, his conversation on Marx, uh, Prabhupada pointed out the, fa uh, the fallacies. But one thing about Marx, because some of you may have not heard this, <laughs> anyone who lives... But I was trained, I was, my father was a, a died in the world communist. And he would, he would take out, he hid it in the closet because he knew the FBI was after him, they were. 
And uh, he would bring it out in the evening, and he would go around the kitchen table, and he would read to me and explain to me the Das Kapital, which is their Bible, you know, communist. And one of the phrases that he inculcated into me, which is one of their mottos, you know, from each according to his abilities to each according to his needs. And that's actually Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada would call it uh, spiritual communism, that you're, you're working for the benefit of one center, you know, Krishna, but the difference is, and Prabhupada pointed this out, if you're working for the glories of Lenin or Marx, you know, you're not getting Amrit, you're not getting nectar, <laughs> because you're not part and parcel of Lenin, you know. But you are of Krishna, so if you're actually serving Krishna, then your needs become minimal. You're, 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 of course, you have certain needs, obviously. That's why Krishna says, Yoga Kshema Baham Yaham, in the, in the eighth chapter. Uh, he says, uh, Those who are always thinking of me, with one point, Ananyas, no other thought, uh, I'm worshiping me, Payupasate, uh, always linked to me, Yuktana, I carry what they need and preserve what they have. Now, this is yoga and shema. This is not a spiritual term. This is, uh, this is just an idiom in Sanskrit. Yoga, of course, means connection. It means we know about yoga. But here, yoga means those things which you need in order to live. Food, water, air, uh, roof over your head, things like that. And some other things, obviously. Uh, so, and, uh, and shema is your security. That's why I preserve what you have. So you need that. You may have all your things, but if you, you know there's, there's, a, there's a mob coming down the street and burning houses and everything, you, that, that's not you know you don't feel you're in trouble. So Chris says, I will I will preserve it, what you have. I will give you your necessities and protection. So, uh, so he said this is spiritual communism, and uh, it works. When, when you have everyone on the same page, the Dvaran Ashram system means according to your ability. Your ability is you have certain psychophysical nature, you're good with your hands, you know, you don't have a high IQ, you're good with the hands. Okay, we need people good with the hands to build things, to fix cars, to farm, and do all kinds of things. So that's the shudras. Then you have people who have a little... We had a devotee here. His name was Sunarma. He got reinitiated. I forgot what his new name was. But uh, he, everything he touched turned to gold. He was, he was very good. You, you remember him? <laughs> Maybe not. He started a business. Um, Yogi Bars? No, Yogi Bars was, was the one they did in, out of um, uh, Eden Agri. But it was a similar thing. It was a health, health bar. And he started making it here. It wasn't called a lounge at that time, but there was a kitchen in here. And that was trying out, and he had the devotees taste it. What do you think? How's it taste? Well, you should a little more of this, a little less of this. And then he actually rented a place and they had a whole business going there and supporting the temple and everything like that. So that's the, the, the uh, Vaishas. You know, mostly they're farmers, but they're also merchants and things like that. And they support all the others. The Shudras get paid by them and the, the Kshatriyas get paid by taxes. And the Sannyasis, and, you know, the Brahmins get charity. Well, where does all the wealth come from? It comes from the Vaishas. But then you have your people who are good at administrating, they have charisma, they're leaders of men, you know, they have martial spirit, the kshatriyas. And then you have Brahmins who are meant to be the brain of the society. They're meant to live as simply as possible as this dear. So they can't be bought off. You see the fallacy in today's? They buy off the intellectuals and the people who can write and they have, you know, the propaganda. So... Uh, that's universal. You'll find intelligent people and charismatic people and martial people and, and good businessmen and, and you know, manual laborers in every society. But if they're centered on service to Krishna, then everyone can be completely satisfied in their role to play. You know, then it's not that everyone is, is hankering to be some other position because Krishna brings his satisfaction. Just like in a big kirtan, no one is thinking, oh, I'm going to stay on this side of the, uh, the temple because on that side there's a bunch of sudras. It's not like that. You know? Everybody is chanting the holy name. <laughs> and in fact, the, the most advanced, you know, the, the, the mark of advanced is that someone is not concerned with name and fame or physical things. He's absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Just like Prabhupada. You know, he was perfectly, perfectly willing to come over with, you know, seven dollars 
You know, that was part of the, yes, I have to go. I can't wait until I make, I'm not going to make any more money, you know. So it was, it was absolutely miraculous that he, that he succeeded. Or it was Krishna's empowerment, Krishna's blessing. So, uh, so with it, this communist thing, Prabhupada, he uh, predicted that the whole, there would be another revolution. No one was saying that. The CIA had no idea that the, the Soviet Union would collapse in 12 years after Prabhupada left. In, in uh, 89, 91, actually, the whole thing imploded, you know. And uh, no one understood, but probably could tell, oh, people are not happy, they're all on the lines, and they, the government is paranoid. They stopped him when he, when he was checking in. I, I heard this on a, on a tape recently. When he was going through customs, you know, with Samashun, he had his, his bag. They opened the bag and looked in the bag, and there was a Bhagavad Gita. And they took out the Bible and said, what is this? And they called somebody over. Prabhupada said, at that time, he said, I thought it was finished. Because he knew that they could send you off to the gulag. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> so they, they, looked, they looked through the Gita and said, no, it's okay. You know, this little Sanskrit. <laughs> Prabhupada was relieved. <laughs> but, but he underwent these difficulties for preaching. You know. So he predicted that, that it would implode and nobody else did. And you could see, you know. So the speaking, how you speak, how you sit and so forth, Arjun wants to see so that he can recognize. Just like in our famous, uh, those of you who have been listening to some of them, there's this uh, Sadhu Sangashtaka, these eight verses glorifying Sadhus and association with Sadhus by Lord Kapila Dev. It's essential. So first he says, The Sangha Majanam Basham Atmana Kavayo Vudu Sahish Sadhu Shikadu Moksha Dwaram Apavatam That uh, mundane of attraction mundane affection keeps us tied to birth and death infernal, but love for sadhus opened wide the doors to life eternal. So we have to find a sadhu. So what's the next verse? Describing the sadhus, the qualities of the sadhu, so you can, you can recognize them when you see, see one. And the famous verse, the tikshiva, karunika, you know, is merciful and tolerant and kind and everything. And then the question, well, how did he get that way? Oh, mayan unnamed bhav and bhaktim. Un- unalloyed devotional service. The sadhu is a devotee. It goes on like that. So that's a very logical question from Arjun. How can we recognize him? And these next few verses describe the Mahabhagavad, actually. Great devotees. Right here in, in the second chapter, because it's, it's a summary of the contents. So we'll, we'll go on, unless you have some comments or questions. Sri Bhagavan Vacha Prajahati Yadakaman Sarvan parta manogatan Atmani vatmana tushta Sita pragyas tadorchite The Supreme Personality of God had said, O parta, when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification, which arise from mental concoction, and is when his mind, thus purified, finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure Krishna consciousness. Purport. The Bhagavatam affirms that any person who is fully in Krishna consciousness or devotional service of the Lord has all the good qualities of the great sages, whereas a person who is not so transcendentally situated has no good qualifications, because he is sure to be taking refuge of his own mental concoctions. Consequently, it is rightly said herein that one has to give up all kinds of sense desire manufactured by mental concoction. Artificially, such sense desires cannot be stopped. But if one is engaged in Krishna consciousness, then automatically sense desires subside without extraneous efforts. Therefore, one has to engage himself in Krishna consciousness without hesitation, for this devotional service will instantly help one onto the platform of transcendental consciousness. The highly developed soul always remains satisfied in himself by realizing himself as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord. Such a transcendentally situated person has no sense desires resulting from petty materialism. Rather, he remains always happy in his natural position of eternally serving the Supreme Lord. So this is a very significant statement. How, it's practically inconceivable that what you can conceive that you can always be happy in this world because we have experience. Some of us have lived 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50, 60, 70 or more. But uh, no one can say, yep, I've really lucked out. I w- I'm always, I've always been happy. No. 
And even if, you, even if you're mostly happy, you certainly see that many people are very miserable. And you, and you can think, oh, well, why am I happy? Well, because I have this and this and this, and because this, this, and this didn't happen to me, and all these different things. So you can easily see how uh, this material world is not built to make us happy all the time. Padam, padam, yad, padam. There's danger at every step, and who could deny it? I had personal experience. My, my, my ankle, you know. I'm taking my walk, as I did so many times before, and I step off the sidewalk, and just right there, it was dark, there happened to be a big ditch, and boom. And now it's, it's almost 100% back. But that was the end of October. How many months has that been? So, and that's, you know, that's minor compared to things that, other things that happen, obviously. So, where can you find happiness, even in the most greatest difficulty? So, we have so many wonderful examples, such as, Haridas Thakur and Pallad Maharaj. Haridas Thakur was uh, the Namacharya. Namacharya means he is the, the, he is the exemplar for the chanting of the holy name. Lord Chaitanya designated him as that. He chanted 300,000 names a day, which is 192 rounds, which is what, 16, um, uh, let's see, it's 12 times what we were supposed to do, I think. Yeah. Uh, imagine that, you know, we're getting through with our rounds, you know, maybe, maybe leave one or two tomorrow, you know, get through. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and that's 16 rounds, and he's chanting 192 rounds. They had probably about how, well, how many hours is that? And, and uh, someone suggested 16, and Prabhupada said yes. Now, I calculated that's five minutes a round for uh, 16 hours. One, at one point, I was thinking, how can I integrate 64 rounds into the morning program? It's very hard. And what I heard was, and this just kind of completely boggled my mind, is that that was the standard in the Gaudiya Mat, you know. That was because, Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who doesn't chant 64 rounds has fallen. So all his disciples, they were chanting 64 rounds. And he once said something. Uh, he, he, I, I think he was in Puri at the time, and all the devotees had come from uh, Bengal to visit him. They did that for 20 years straight. You know, it was ecstatic. They walked all the way from Mayapur to uh, Jagannapuri. How many, how many miles is that? Is it more than a thousand? It's about pretty far, right? <laughs> so, uh, but they didn't care. They're just walking and chanting and dancing, you know. So they get to, uh, when they get to, uh, to Puri, they have uh, planned out where they're going to stay. Uh, Shivananda Sain took care of everything. So then they began inviting Lord Chaitanya for lunch, this is a whole pastime. They, they, they'd be, you know, everyone would scramble to want to invite him for lunch. You know, it's a tremendous honor. And, you know. so, he, so what happened was he said, well, I'm not going to accept uh, an invitations to, uh, from, for lunch from anyone who is not a luck putty. Anyone here on this side of the room, can you say what a luck putty is? Yeah, but, not, but, but it, 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 idiomatically, it means someone who is the master of 100,000 rupees. So this is where they took it, right? <laughs> so they all got distressed and depressed because they're all simple living. No one has 100,000 rupees. You know this. So Lord Chaitanya laughed. He says, no, 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 not 100,000 rupees, 100,000 names. And that's 64 rounds. It's actually, actually a little more than 60, uh, 100,000. So that, uh, they said, well, that we can do. You know, so he's chanting. So, so he, his standard was anyone who doesn't chant that much has fallen. And, and Bhakti Siddhanta introduced that. And the thing that really blew my mind is that he didn't have a, a Java period in his, you know, in his morning program. They just w- were supposed to do it. You know, they got up early. Mangal Arctic was there. And then there was, uh, I, I don't know the whole program, but I, somehow or other they had to get it to 64 rounds. So th- that, that, you know, what is, what is that 64 rounds? I mean, that's a... A way of, 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 of becoming Krishna kindness is supposed to be 64, and then it goes on the rest of the day. In other words, if you chant that many rounds, it's going to be going on inside also. That's the idea. I remember, before I even knew anything about Krishna kindness, I read a book called The Way of a Pilgrim. Did you ever hear that one? It's probably not very even known now, but it was popular during the late 60s, early 70s. And it was about... I think it was based on a, 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 some true history, but it was fictionalized, you know. It was about a, a Russian who uh, was reading the Bible, and he comes across this uh, passage 
that one should pray ceasingly, uh, ceaselessly. And there's even a, a prayer called the Jesus Prayer I learned from this book. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. I'm not, you know, that's in different languages, obviously. So this uh, aspirant, this Christian, he was curious about how you can pray ceasingly because you, there's so many other things you have to do and say, you know. So he went to this priest, that priest, that priest. None of them gave him a, a good answer. Then he went to something called a staritz, who was, we would call would be an actual guru, someone who is, you know, realized, Paramahansa, Christian Paramahansa. So he said, yes, yes, you can do. You start out, you go home, and you, for uh, three hours a day, you just order this prayer. You know, Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And after a week of that, you come back and tell me how, you, how you're doing. So he did that, and he said, okay, I did it, you know, and I, I got a sort of jaw after a while, you know, but I, I was able to do it. Okay, okay, now you go back and do six hours, you know. <laughs> okay, you know. So he started doing it. And, and then he came back and said, well, you know, it's uh, pretty amazing. And so... Really what he was saying, I think there were three sessions, he said, now it's not stopping, it's going on inside. After all that chanting, it's going on. And that's the whole idea. And that's why Lord Chaitanya says, uh, that if one is more humble than a blade of grass, more taller than a tree, is always ready to give honors to others and doesn't want any for himself, then you can chant Krishna, the Hare Hari Krishna mantra constantly. Because the whole idea is to come to the point of avismati. You know this verse, smartabhya satatam vishnu, vismartabhya on the jatachit, sabha vidina shedak syo eta yoreva kinkara. That uh, always remember Vishnu. Probably begins the translation of this verse, which appears in the CC. He says, Krishna is the origin of Vishnu. So, in other words, we can substitute Krishna there. Always, to always remember Krishna and to never forget him. All the other rules and regulations. Rules and regulations in Prabhupada's idiom means the do's and the don'ts. Rules are what you should do. And regulations, like the four regs, are what you shouldn't do. They're all servants of these two. To always remember Krishna and to never forget him. Now think about it. I, I tell this, when I quote this verse, I point out. At first glance, it looked to me, well, this is kind of redundant. If you're always remembering, you're not forgetting. If you're never forgetting, you're always remembering. Why mention them both? Because... We're, there are so many things we do to remember Krishna, primarily of which is chanting his name and there are all the other aspects. You think about it. You're cooking, cleaning, everything. You're supposed to think, I'm doing this for Krishna. And then what to speak of chanting in front of the deity. You know, it's, it's meant to help us remember Krishna all the time. So, but then uh, there are other things that we do, we still do, to help us forget Krishna, unfortunately. So the, the, uh, the idea is to do as many things as you can to remember Krishna and stop doing those things that are helping you to forget Krishna. And gradually by those two influences, because Krishna is also within your heart and he wants you to remember him, that you'll be able to remember Krishna all the time. And this is mentioned in the 12th canto, right at the end of the, of the instructions of Sutta Goswami to the sages. There's something called, I found there's eight verses about hearing and chanting. And it's called the Krishna Katashtaka. I named it the Krishna Katashtaka. I hope I didn't commit an offense. And uh, the last two verses talk about Avismati. Avismati Sridhar Apada Padmayo. Never forgetting the uh, lotus feet of Sridhar, which is another name for Krishna or Vishnu. But then the last verse talks about Krishna. Avismati Krishna Padara Vindayo. Never forgetting the lotus feet of Krishna. Now it's interesting because I, I worked on that book as an editor. And recently I was rereading those and I said, there's a mistake here. Because this said, this said remembrance. But it's not just, Avismati is not just remembrance. It's constant remembrance. If you never forget, you'll always remember. But if you remember, that doesn't mean that you'll always remember. If you say remember, you see what I'm saying? Not forgetting. How did we come here? We willfully forgot Krishna. We were remembering Krishna for eons and eons being in the spiritual world. But we decided to forget him so that we could try to enjoy you can't, you can't be in the enjoying mood if you're always thinking of Krishna. You're thinking of the super soul watching you. He's just like a, a thief. He, he does everything he can to, to, to not be observed by the police, right? But if he knows the police are watching me, I'm not a thief, right? You can't be a thief. <laughs> Isn't that? 
So <laughs> I remember in, in the introduction, Prabhupada talks about the super soul, how he's conscious of everything that we're thinking and doing. And then Prabhupada says, and we should not forget that. We should always remember that. <laughs> but that's precisely what we do forget because we want to enjoy. So this, uh, he start, he's going to start his instruction here. Which we read 54, right? We didn't read 55. Uh, we read every 55, okay. Prajahati yada kaman sarvan partamanogatan, that these desires, they arise in your mind. They're, they're, they're all generated from the mind. The mind's business is to survey through the senses what's pleasurable, what's pleasurable, what's painful, what's painful. Let me go for the pleasurable, avoid the painful, go for the painful. That's the, the mind is doing that. And the intelligence is figuring out how to do it. Is, is, is all, all that needs to be done in order to bring the senses in the contact with the sense objects so you can enjoy. You see? So these desires are rising from the mind, but they're also planted in the mind. They're planted in the mind by simply living in the world, seeing, and also by those who want to sell you something to make you happy. First they have to convince you that you're not happy because you don't have X, Y, and Z. Right? Because everyone has it now. You know? this, is the, this is the latest bicycle. And you're still riding around on that old, you know, two-wheeler that, with a, without any gears. I remember when the 10-speeds came out when I was a kid, you know. <laughs> now they have electric. <laughs> now they, you just stand there on the, on, the, on the thing and it just goes, right? <laughs> so you can see the, the whole material energy, Maya is, is the greatest advertiser. She, she, she packages it, right? Looks like bodies, okay? Sex desire. But really, what is it, you know? <laughs> just a, uh, what is that? Yasyatna buddhi kunapeti datuke. It's a bag. It, the bodies are a bag with, propped up by bones so it doesn't just collapse on the floor. And uh, the covering, it, the whole thing is it's a covering. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big con job. Yeah, we, we, we have, there's an attraction there, but it has to be just so. And Maya presents it in such a way that you become attracted. But then, you know, the changes. You change, the, the, the other bag changes, you know. Now it's no, we're no longer youthful, not wrinkly and everything. What happened to all that pleasure, you know? Now you want something else. Or it wouldn't, you know. so, so this is the nature. So here he's saying, prajahati yada kaman. That w- prajahati doesn't mean just give up. It means to throw far away. Here it says it gives up. But uh, the pra means really with great energy. Uh, common, all different varieties of uh, desire that arise from the mind and the key is to remain satisfied in the self now this word self I'm convinced should be capitalized Prabhupada, his whole pur- purport is that uh, the Bhagavatam affirms that any person who is fully in Krishna consciousness or devotional service of the Lord has all the good qualities of the great sages so he sp- the whole thing is about someone in Krishna consciousness that's the supreme self uh, I mean, do we ever talk about how you could be satisfied in the, just, by, just by meditating on your soul? Or, you know? Self-realization in, in bhakti means God-realization. It doesn't, doesn't have one without the other. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. But uh, it's obvious in, 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 in context that to find full satisfaction is to find full satisfaction in being Krishna conscious, in serving Krishna. And if, if you are satisfied, then the material desires fade away. The things that you once were, were passionate about and addicted to, you're actually able to avoid and become free from the thrall. And, and uh, it, it's such a sense of liberation. This is actually the, what liberation means. Liberation means being liberated from the knots in the heart. You remember the famous knots in the heart? It's all over the Bhagavatam. Yatpada pankaja palasha vilasa bhaktya so here he's describing, I'd probably like to quote this verse. This is the Kumaras instructing Maharaj Pritu. It's a very wonderful section of the uh, fourth canon. And this is near the end. It says, Pada So Pada Pankaja is the lotus feet. You understand? What is, what is Pankaja? Who can analyze that word? Why is, yeah, why, is, yeah, why, is it, why is the lotus called a Pankaja? From the mud. Yeah. Punk is mud. From the bottom of the river or the bottom of the lake. <laughs> Ambuja, born from the water. So, Pada Pankaja, the lotus feet of Krishna. Palasha. Now, Palasha is the petals. 
So the, the toes. In other words, you're getting uh, vilas, you're getting spiritual pleasure from serving the tips of the toes of Krishna's lotus feet. Now what's the result of that, besides the pleasure? Panga vilasa vilasa bhaktya, devotional service, karma shayam gotitam udgutayanti santa. Santa are the saints, or the sadhus, right? We have the word, here we are sitting in San Diego, it's the same word in Spanish, English. Santa uh, fe. Uh, so, uh, karma shayam means the aspiration to fruit of activities, sense gratification. Gratitam, which are like knots in your heart. So the karma gratitam udgutayanti, they're untied or cut by the pleasure you're getting from serving Krishna's lotus feet. This is the great advantage that devotees have over the impersonalists who are trying to be detached by sheer force of will. They don't, have, they don't believe in the form of God. They believe that ultimately everything is without form, right? It's, it's just one light. Okay, but they, you still got to be detached because, you know, well, what, what are you going to do? For them, the, the, the deity is just a, it's all just a construct, it's an imagination. Right? They think, This is a verse by Rupa Goswami in the Bhakti Samana Sindhu. What is a mamukshubi? Does anyone know a mamukshu? One who wants liberation. Right? That's the ultimate goal. I want liberation. From what? Birth, death, old age, and disease. So this is mamukshubi. So what do they think? Everything, prapanchik diya, but hari sambandhi vastana, hari sambandhi vastana, I mean things in relate, that are related to hari, such as the holy name, prasadam, the deities, you know, it's all material. It's just a stone, archi vishnu shiladi, have you ever, it's a wonderful verse. Someone who thinks that the worshipable deity is simply a stone, he's a resident of hell already. Someone who thinks that the, the, the Vaishnavas should be understood by their place of birth, he's a resident of hell. One who thinks that the holy name is an ordinary scent like that, you see? It's describing the impersonalists, the Mayavadis. I remember I met, I met them. I used to, you know, I didn't hang out with them, but they would come to the temple in Brooklyn. We had a lot of people coming. And they said, this, yeah, I like the prasadam, but it's this ordinary food. Which, you know, I, I stood up and got, a, you know, got a far away from that person. <laughs> So, so because you, you, if you don't have any faith, you can't have any nectar, you know? It's all just a con mental construct. So they're really, so here, the, the rest of the verse is, how do you Mumukshubi Parityago. They give everything up, even those things related to Krishna. The holy name, prasadam, everything, give it up. Then what? You know? Then they, 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 not this, not this, not this. Neti, neti, neti. So they're trying to, so what is their vairagya? Because vairagya is the, the gold standard. You can tell where someone is at. I mentioned this yesterday, the first verse of the Upadesha Amrita. If someone can resist, it's the same topic, the urges of the talking, uh, the mind, uh, anger, right? Tongue, belly, and genitals. You see that someone is really dira. That, that word will come up here in this, this series here. Uh, in other words, self-controlled then that person must be getting their pleasure from the transcendence. Then they're advanced, you see. So, uh, here Rupa Goswami said, this is uh, Vairagya, it was polgu. You know what polgu means? Weak, right? Weak. It means that they can be blown away. They can, they can fall down again easily. But for the devotees, he says, Anasaktasya vishyanyata aham apayunjita nirbanna krishya sambande yuktam vairagya muchite. This is yukta vairagya. There's strong vairagya in yoga. So what's the, what's the, the um, criteria there? Without attachment, employing those things that are appropriate to employ at a certain time and place in the service of Krishna. And uh, those things or those elements include our own senses and mind that we always have, right? But sometimes, uh, you know, you come into a whole bunch of money, then you can use that, you know, or you have certain skills, and you can use that. So onasaktasi, without attachment, uh, to the vishyas, the objects of the senses, using those vishyas, which can also you know, entrap you in sense gratification, but using them in the service of Krishna. Near bandha, you stay unbound. You're not bound to that because you're doing it for Krishna. Your, your pleasure is uh, giving to Krishna, employing these things in Krishna. 
Krishna service. Krishna Sambandhi, you get bound up to Krishna, which is what you want. You know, you're bound up to Krishna in, in, in affection. Nirmana Krishna, Yuktam Vairagya Muchate. This is said to be Yukta Vairagya, which is what we're after. So here it says, Prajahati Yadakaman, the person who has given up these things. He's not prescribing here, but he's, he's descri- describing. He's describing the person. Arjun wanted to ask, what is he, uh, how does he talk? What is his uh, language? What does he sit and so forth? So, and tushta. Tushta means satisfied. This appears in that second verse of the uh, main four. After, after Krishna says, I am God, everything comes from me, the wise who understand this fully, they worship me with all their hearts. Well, how do they do that? Machitta, madgata prana. Bodhiyantak parasparam, katayantashtamam nityam, tushyanti chadamantisha. There's a tushyanti word. Tushyanti is the verb, tushta is the noun. Uh, so the, the satisfaction of the, of the heart, real deep satisfaction, and ramanti, transcendental pleasure. The, if you're always experiencing satisfaction in Krishna consciousness, and then the, 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 all these kamans, all these material attractions, become like dust. They don't have meaning, any meaning for you anymore. And we could see that with Srila Prabhupada. He had so much. I mean, he, he came from nothing, right? But then he was, had millions of, of dollars at his disposal, and thousands of devotees who would do whatever he wanted. You can see how, how someone who didn't have the, the tushta and Krishna you know, consciousness uh, we got, would be, get completely swept away by that. And we saw that with the other bogus yogis coming, where they took advantage of their female disciples, or they you know, cashed out, and they you know, were living very high. You know, and, and because without that higher taste, it's too tempting. But Prabhupada con- it was steadily, steadily, and, and whenever any money, money came, build a temple, print the books. You know, that was, spend, it, spend it on things that can help everyone to be Krishna conscious. So that's the, that's the proof. So this is the description now we're going to be reading of the uh, uh, Stita Pragya, of, these, of the real, uh, those who are in Samadhi and trance. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't leave any time for questions or discussion. But uh, just an announcement about tomorrow. I said there was going to be a uh, uh, slideshow, but it turns out that I just discovered. <laughs> I just discovered. I was reading. They they sent out the announcement for the Gopanim Festival, and there was the the lecture given by Dravidadas. I said, "Wait a minute! Didn't, no one told me that." <laughs> I called Balaram. <laughs> he was wherever he is. I think in Tucson. I'll be back tomorrow. I said, Balaram, did you ask me to give this lecture at Gorbani? You know, I thought I did, you know. I said, Balaram, you know, you're 32 years old. I'm 74 years old. I can forget. <laughs> so it wasn't, I didn't forget. You forgot to ask me. Anyway, luckily I found out so I can prepare. But I'll do the slideshow tomorrow, uh, Thursday evening. We'll have a, 45 minutes. We'll have a half hour and then we'll have a 50 minute slideshow, 50 minute slideshow, and then we'll be dancing and chanting in ecstasy. I'm sorry? Thursday. Thursday. Go so that means tomorrow we won't have it. We'll have a regular class tomorrow. Tomorrow? Thursday. I think the class is at uh, No, it's at 6.30. I think they have an Abhi Sheikh. Yeah, it ends at 7.15. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Honeymoon.